All right, welcome back. It's 1121, 21 minutes after the hour here on Sunday morning. Welcome to Doug Padger Radio, a conversation that we call religious radio that's not quite right. Sometimes it's not quite religious. Sometimes it's not just right in any sense at all. But today it is having a great conversation here with Dan Merchant, who's the creator of a film that's going to be airing at the Mall of America, opening on February 26th. You're going to want to get out to this one. If you don't have other plans for Friday, you do now. And if you do have plans for Friday... Might want to make an arrange. Might want to make an adjustment. The film is called "Lord Save Us from Your Followers," and Dan's the filmmaker. He's uh, touring the country and uh, was good enough to come on the show here and tell us about it. Now, uh, folks, here's here's how this works, right? Broadcast media um, connects to the widest swath of people who may or may not be interested. Personal social media. That's a whole other deal. That's where you get to invite your friends. Dan's going to mention it here in a minute that he wants you to invite someone to come with you, and he has a little slogan. Hey, atheists, invite your Christian friends to go to a movie to evangelize them. I think it's perfect. <laughs> I love it. So, so this is Dan Merchant. Dan's traveling the country. I know that you're exhausted, so thanks for uh, giving us some time here to talk about this. And, um, and t- tell us a little bit more about the film. You, you got access to a lot of people. You, you, you involve um, a lot of film clip from popular culture, but also a lot of interviews with people across what we would call the political and ideological spectrum here in the film. Yeah, no, absolutely. I really, you know, the, the, the movie invites everybody into the conversation, and, and I went to go try and meet everybody. And, and two of the notables that, that I think sort of represent uh, kind of polar uh, opposites uh, in, the, in the public square and the political sphere were uh, Al Franken, um, who is now, the, uh, of course, the senator from the fine state of Minnesota. Hey. And, uh, and Rick Santorum, who, mm-hmm. uh, who uh, we interviewed about three weeks after he got stomped um, after, I guess it was the 2006 midterms. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so it was very interesting to meet those two guys. And, and the interview with Franken took place just as he was getting ready to start his campaign. So this is a couple years ago now. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and the conversations were great. And, and it was really interesting because people come up to me and say, you know, I hate Rick Santorum. But, you know, he had some really interesting comments in your film, and I thought it was, I was really surprised to hear him say this and this. And then I've got other folks, you know, conservative Christian folks that will come up and go, I hate Al Franken. But, you know, he really made, a, he made some sense in your movie. That, what was he like? Hmm. He seems like a great guy. And, yeah. And, and I think part of the point is, is that we've been suckered in the, uh, in the mainstream media by mm-hmm. the soundbite. Yeah. And, and the, the conversation with Al Franken and the conversation with Rick Santorum, just to name a couple of, of a bunch of folks we met, um, the conversations were so different. I mean, these were human beings who were very smart guys who believe what they believe and are really passionate about it. Yes. And, and the conversations were so reasonable, and, and you might be surprised how enjoyable, <clears throat> and I can, I can assure you you'll be surprised by some of the things that they have to say including Al Franken, I'll give one of Franken's great lines, was that he, he, uh, he spoke about going to a Christian coalition events to, to yeah. kind of hear uh-huh. what the other guys were thinking about. And, and he said, and I like the people at those events, I think they're nicer than the people at the Democratic Convention. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. is not anything I would have expected Franken to say. And, uh, and he, he told some great stories and gave some good insights. But, but the point is that the film is designed as a conversation starter. It's not. It's not uh, uh, for all the for all the debt we owe Michael Moore um, for making the documentary entertaining. Yeah, so right. People don't think it's lines on the Serengeti. For all that debt, the curse of Moore is that he makes one-sided movies, and you might love his side mm-hmm. or hate his side, but they're one-sided. This film is really. I mean, I really, as best I could do, um, I really worked hard to go. Look, here's where my biases are. Here's what I think. But let's let everybody talk and let's get into this. And and consequently, you get a film that that atheists can take their Christian friends to, and both can sit down and kind of understand the other other guy. I think in a new way. I mean, it's been pretty it's been pretty moving things that happen at these screenings. And and just you know, I've been out for a couple of weeks now, and mm-hmm. I get to meet a few hundred people every night. And the comments and the responses and the hugs and the tears, and it's just like, what's going on? Yeah, that's and, terrific. And, uh, I don't know. We tapped into something, and you'll have to go see it to find out for yourself what it means to you. But it's been it's been wild. And, and and I know that you've worked hard in the movie to be fair and to be fair to both sides with with a movie whose intention is to try to say, let's stop shouting at each other. Right. And let's start listening. You you've worked very hard to be fair, and and to your credit, maybe it's because you have a just a, a good sense of humor and personality yourself. You could bring that to the film. It's not a stodgy, boring film. 
<laughs> right? And so many documentaries about important topics. And look, frankly, uh, ha- helping uh, people in the United States and around the world have more productive, healthy, and and humane conversations with each other around the issues of religion, that that's a pretty heady topic and a pretty important thing. But you've made it fun. In fact, I th- was it USA Today or the Sun-Times that, that coined this, Michael Moore meets Monty Python? Yeah, I think that was USA Today USA that USA Today. said that. Yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean, anyway, what, what they're getting at is you take on a big topic, it's important, but but there's there's a whimsical nature to it and uh, and a, a a fun vibe that comes well, I, in the movie. You know, it, it's funny because I've I've sat through you know 160 screenings or something. Oh I've, my I've goodness! Watched, <laughs> I've watched audiences watch it together, and and I watched the people come in. I watched the gay couples come in, you know, mm-hmm. dressed in leather, holding hands. You know, mm-hmm. two bald guys. You know, yeah. And, and it's like wow, they're in love. That's awesome. You know, so yeah. they come in and sit down, and then you see the youth group come in, and then you see you know pastors or small groups or couples or just people that listen to public radio or yes. something. Uh-huh. So you see this really diverse group come in, and, and I stand in the back of that room, and when I hear them all laughing together at mm. certain things, How do you like, that? like you know, I, I think there's something about the medium of the, of the movie with the humor in it and all that that proves my point that we're more alike than we like to believe. <laughs> yes, yes. You're all yeah. laughing at the same stuff. Someone <laughs> explain that to me. Yes, yeah, that, that, that's great. Now, now, now tell me, I, I know, you, you know you're you knee-deep in this. You've been, you've been running it hard for a number of years, both in the concept and then into the book stage, and now there's a film, and now you're having to tour and promote the film yourself because there's not big money behind this, right? This right. isn't... This uh, isn't we, um, we raised what we could to, to get it in, uh, you know, get it in the can, so to speak, and, um, and there it is. Yeah. What's been the... Um, what's been the big surprise in all of this for you um this this the, process the big surprise is that um is is that I, I don't know i guess i expected like 20 percent on the left to say oh it's he's just um you know it's just religious propaganda and then 20 yeah. percent mm-hmm. on the right would go he's a heretic burn him yes and and it's been like one or one percent on each side or something How about that it, it's remarkable i mean i mean like you said i mean i did my best you know i worked hard and i tried to be fair and i i tried to you know, I suppose the best thing was I was trying to answer these questions for myself. Yes. So, so I was trying to understand why I had become so comfortable with this mm. us versus them thing. Yeah. And, and yeah. The fact that that's so counter to what Jesus preaches and lived out that, you know, boy, there's something wrong here. So I suppose the fact that that I wasn't I wasn't trying to aim for a certain agenda and I don't know. I mean, it, it's been weird. The, the, the biggest surprise has been that. Um, that even the people that that stand up and go, well, yeah, but what about the truth? When yeah. are we going to stand up for the truth? Right. They're so agitated because they know I'm onto something mm-hmm. <laughs> that's going to require them to sit and think about it and pray about it if they're Christian yeah. folks. So they, well, uh, and, and and I agree. I think you've accomplished something. I know here in the Twin Cities, there's another AM radio station that's uh, conservative Christian radio, and they sent out a big promotion for the film, so they're supporting it. And here yeah. on this program, I'm a pastor, but of a different uh, persuasion than, right. than that version, and we're telling you to go, so it's not very often that you're going to get both of these streams that are saying to folks, show up and take a look at what Dan's thrown together here, and I think it's going to be well worth your time. Folks, if you head over to uh, the, his website for the movie, Lord Save Us the Movie, you're going to find links in there for Facebook and for Twitter and for Tangle, which is a YouTube-like um, web service, and even for MySpace. You know, all the way back to the days when people use MySpace. <laughs> you can get connected to all those places. Dan's a good guy. You can hear that in his voice. He's made a great movie. Let's go. I'll meet you over there at the theater. We'll go on Friday night. We'll go out to the Mall of America and engage in this conversation. And I know if you appreciate Doug Padgett Radio, religious radio that's not quite right, you're going to appreciate the movie. Lord, save us from your followers. Dan, good luck to you, and thanks for being on the show, and hope our paths cross soon. Oh, I look forward to meeting you soon, and thank you so much, Doug. Okay, buddy. Talk to you soon. Hey, Doug Padgett Radio, we'll be back. After this, with natural health coach Shelly Padgett.